Hello, welcome to the 1st of April, not the 1st of April when you're seeing this, uh, it will be like a week in or however long this vlog ends up being, but it is now 1am on the 1st of April, uh, which means that my reading challenge for 30 books in 30 days has begun. I have just spent the last hour sorting out my reading journal because I had really fallen behind on it in March and I wanted to like actually use it properly in April. I did really well January and February but I think because I was in a bit of a reading slump in March I just didn't use my planner in March. If you're curious, hello, if you're curious at all about what planner it is that I have it's the always fully booked planner from Little Inkling Designs. Um, yeah, I'd kind of fallen behind for March. So I'm all set up, ready to go for April in the planner. Very excited about that. I've gone for an orange theme because I, I have good feelings about April and orange is my favourite colour. So we're embracing that. But it's 1am, which means it's about time for me to start reading. And my first book has been chosen by my patrons. You are balanced very dodgily. But my first book has been chosen by my patrons because I didn't want that choice myself. So let's have a look at what they picked. I didn't give them like 30 options. I gave them six and they have chosen Psalm for the Wild Bill by Becky Chambers. Let me grab that without knocking you over. <laughs> Ta-da! Here it is. Sun for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. They've actually picked the smallest book on the TBR, so yay for that. It's teeny tiny. This is going to be my first book of 30 and 30. I can smash this out in a day. Hopefully I can get a little bit of a head start. I don't know what I'm going to make of this. I have not got on with Becky Chambers in the past. I did and after a long way to a small angry planet. Um, but I have heard that this one is very different to that. Um, and the acknowledgements, not the acknowledgements, um, the dedication in the front of this, I quite like. It's just for anybody who could use a break, which gives me good vibes. It is 1am, so I'm going to go and get myself ready for bed, get myself in bed with this, see how much I can read before I fall asleep, uh, which probably won't be a lot because it's 1am and I am tired, but I would like to get a good head start, so... I'm feeling really optimistic. I'm excited. I'm really excited about this month. See how long this enthusiasm lasts. <laughs> Hello, this is the angle you are at because I don't have anything to stack you on. But it is way later on the 1st of April. I think I updated you at like 2am or something stupid. Um, but... Day one done of 30 and 30, book one done of 30 and 30. I have read A Song for the Wild Bill today. This has been pleasant. This has been nice. I don't think this is like a new favourite book or anything ridiculous like that. I don't think it's one that has made as much of an impact on my life as I feel like it has for other people. Like I've heard people saying that this is a story and a message that's really like stuck with them and it's made them think and so on and I get it I can see why this is definitely not plot heavy this is message heavy I wouldn't even say it's character driven um it is a tiny novella with a point and I think the point is made in that dedication where it's for anyone who needs a break this is a reminder to take a break and have a cup of tea and everything will be okay and that's pleasant that's nice but for me not necessarily impactful not one that I'm necessarily like excited to pick up the next book for but I think I will keep it as an option for 30 and 30 um, but it's not my immediate next go-to but this gets a four star from me. I, I had a pleasant time with it. Um, so four star for that. And my next read for 30 and 30, I have decided is going to be my reread of God Killer. Um, the audiobook is available on Everand. 
and I've been thinking about wanting to reread God Killer for a while now. I want to reread it before I read Sunbringer and it will be a quick reread. The audiobook is available on Everand for me just there so I'm gonna give that a go. With it being a reread I can just listen peacefully, calmly, whilst pootling on with other things as well and not worry too much about not taking in every little detail because it's a reread, it's just a refresher, um, which will be nice for work tomorrow to have an audiobook if I'm doing anything that will permit that sort of activity. Um, so that is my plan and that will be book two and with any luck I can get through all of that tomorrow, but we will see if that happens tomorrow. <laughs> Well, I smashed that. I've also cut my own hair. I think I might have gone a little bit too short and think I kind of look like the villain from Despicable Me. Is his name Vector? I think I look a little bit like Vector. I've gone a bit too short, but it'll grow. It's fine. Um, but it is now the third, actually. I didn't update the vlog at all yesterday. Um, but I did read all of Godkiller, so absolutely smashed that. I'm so glad that I reread this because I know I was saying I need a reread because there's things that I have forgotten. There was so much that I had forgotten, and I think I enjoyed this a little bit more on reread than I did the first time I read it, which is interesting. Um, but I am now more excited for Sunbringer. I'm very refreshed on what is going on in this one. So we follow Kissen, who is a god killer, Inara, who is a young girl who is somehow tied to a small god, and a knight who is also a baker, and a king who has permitted the killing of the gods, and there is a rebellion, and all sorts. I had forgotten so much, um, but I'm very excited to see where Sunbringer goes now after I have been refreshed and I'm feeling good. I still think it's a three star book for me this one. Um, I don't think my rating has changed but I am still excited for the next one. It's a very bizarre feeling like it's got so much potential but the book itself doesn't quite hit but the story is good. Does that make any sense? I don't know but I finished it so two books down in two days. It is now the third. I have started my reread of Saint's Blood today. I am not too far in. I think I'm like eight chapters in or something. But as well as that, because I'm not going to smash that one today, um, I am starting another book and I have asked my patrons to vote for this one and they selected, again I gave them six options and let them pick. I tried to vary it so six different options than they had the other day. But they've picked bookshops and bone dust. I nearly said bone dust and bookshops. Would have been nearly the same, but not quite. This is the Fairy Loot edition. You can see my bookmark sticking out just there. I've only just started this. I am not far in at all. Um, so I don't anticipate finishing a book today, but I would like to get a little ways into both of those books. Um, and I am also starting another reading challenge today but it's going to be for a different vlog and that vlog will actually go up before this one so you are allowed to know about it but I'm going to be starting my the JD Ray of manga video. I'm going to be reading a manga that begins with each letter of JD Ray. I won't know what's coming next until I've finished the first one so it, I won't know what's going to be coming for the A until I've read the J all will be clear in that video, but I won't be mentioning any of those manga in this video. They will be in that one. So you might not hear from me for a couple of days whilst I still knock out books for 30 and 30, but for a different challenge. Hope that's okay. But in terms of updates for Bookshops and Bone Dust and my reread of Saint's Blood, that will all still be here. So, hurrah. My emails are going nuts and I've got hiccups. Hello, it's been a couple of days since I updated this vlog because I did the JD Ray of Manga vlog which has already gone up and is done and is out of the way so we can get back to this and back to our regular scheduled programming. I am now, what does that put me, 10 books in? Because I read 8 books for that 
Um, and obviously in this I've read Song of the Wild Bill and God Killer. So I'm 10 books in and it is the 7th of April, so I'm feeling kind of okay. My patrons did pick for me to read Bookshops and Bone Dust next, that was their next vote. However, I am on chapter 5 and I'm not feeling it. I'm just not feeling that cosy fantasy vibe right now. Like, I'm not disliking it. The atmosphere is cute, but I think I need something that's gonna hook me right now to get me going and I'm not sure this is it. So I'm on sprints with my patrons at the moment and they all said, ignore us, we were wrong, we're wrong anyway, ignore us, we always pick the wrong thing, <laughs> ignore us, don't worry about us, we're always wrong anyway, um, which is really funny, they're all a funny bunch. Um, so they have happily said, like, if you're not in the mood for that, don't listen to us. Um, especially for 30 books in 30 days, you don't want to be bogged down by a book you're not feeling. So what are you feeling? And the answer is, I am feeling Ragnar Crimson. And I didn't want my 30 and 30 to be full of manga, but I want to read Ragnar Crimson. I read the first volume of this in the J.D. Ray of Manga video, it was the R for that. Um, I had never heard of it, Gavin had never heard of it. You can go and see my immediate reactions to volume one in that, as well as a bunch of other volume ones as well. Um, but I really want to continue this one. And volume two is sat right here and I really want to read this. So I'm gonna, and then that'll get me go in and then we'll see how I feel. Um, I may then dive into volume three, who knows, but I really want to read this, so I'm gonna read this. Let's go. Hello. This is probably not the most flattering angle to be at, but um, I did finish Ragnar Crimson volume two and I have now also finished Ragnar Crimson volume three. I'm obsessed. I can't be stopped. I mean, the temptation is very strong to read Ragnar Crimson volume 4 because it's right here. Um, and thank you to Cece who is an absolute fiend and needs to be stopped at all costs for just wiping out my wish list. Um, I love you endlessly but stop that because I also have volume 5 here as well. So I do have plenty of Ragnar Crimson to keep me going. Um, but I have now finished volume two and volume three. What does that put me at in terms of books finished? Is that 12 now? 12. That is my 12th book done. Hurrah! Um, and I have also, I should probably let you know, ugh, been making some good progress on my reread of Saint's Blood. I'm on page 382 where my pen is, that bookmark is where I started today. So I've read um, from page 251 to 382 of this today, as well as reading Ragnar Crimson 3 as well. Um, I am doing the audio of this though, so I'm hoping to finish that tomorrow at work, because um, I have some tasks that I can just pop an audiobook on and get done whilst listening along. Um, and I'm loving my reread. I had forgotten one of the main points of this book. Like the Great Coat series as a whole is kind of grim. Um, torture plays a big part and there is a torturous part in Saints Blood that I had massively forgotten. Like when I think of the torture in the Great Coats series, I think of Night Shadow. But there is also a piece in this but yeah I had forgotten happens and I'm so close to finishing so yeah I will finish this one off tomorrow so making very good progress there and then my other read that I have started that I'm physically reading not audioing is Someone You Can Build a Nest In by John Wiswell. This is an arc this comes out on the 11th uh, which will have passed by the time this video goes up. Um, I am confused by this book. The way it was pitched to me, uh, the way I understand it from the blurb, um, Shusheshin is a swamp monster who 
is a shapeshifter um, and can like resemble a human and she meets a human monster hunter who is hunting her but because she's got this human disguise on the monster hunter doesn't know that it's her that she's hunting and Shisheshen falls in love with the monster hunter and wants to build a life with this monster hunter and work out why this hunter thinks that the monster that is Shisheshen has cursed her family. Like, it's comped to House in the Cerulean Sea. That's what I was expecting. I did not pay too much attention to some of the, uh, like, blurbed comments on this. This is horror? Horror meets warm cosy, whimsical, but also with body horror. It's gruesome, it's violent. Very early on in this, like the first page, we learn a little bit about the nature of Shisheshen as a monster and how she devours human bodies, eats the bones, builds a nest in the bones. Yeah, she hunts. She hunts people and kills them gruesomely, which I didn't quite expect because I didn't pay that much attention. This one here, quirky, heartfelt, funny, and absolutely brimming with gore. Uh, another one I'm pretty sure was something like, it feels wrong to call this, like, warm and cosy when it's filled with so much body horror, but here we are. So, very weird combination of genres going into this, but I'm very early in. I'm only uh, 32 pages in, so we'll see how this goes. So far, so good at 32 pages. As I say, we're learning a lot about the, the monster element of Shishashin and what she is uh, capable of, and some of it is pretty grim, but I'll keep going with that and we'll report back because I'm no longer sure what to expect. update you on such as I have finished my reread of Saints Blood. I love this series so very much. I so much. I think I mentioned yesterday when I'd given you an update on where I was about how much of this I had actually forgotten and how there was some like torture going on and some big parts that I had forgotten so much that I had forgotten and in fact one of the big moments that happens in this I thought happened in book four so clearly I don't know this series as well as I should but I have finished this this is obviously book three in the Great Coats series by Sebastian de Castell one of my favorite series of all time ever it's dark it's grim it's gritty it's gruesome it's political, it's intriguing, it's full of all of my buzzwords. It follows three great coats. The great coats have been disbanded when the king was murdered, but they have to fulfill their dead king's one last wish, and this is the story of the great coats doing that. Very Three Musketeers esque, um, very swashbuckly. There's my usual spiel. Still five stars. I don't think anything's going to change that for me. It's just one of my favourite books ever. And I'm very glad to have done my reread. My Patreon live show for this one, for the buddy read, is later this week. I'm excited to chat about it with them. I think most of the people participating in the buddy read are also really enjoying the series, so it seems to have landed quite well, which is good because I have a habit of rereading my favourite series as buddy reads with the Patreon as a way to, you know, push my favourite books upon them. Force feed them my favourite books. Um, so that seems to be going well, but I'm really glad to have finished my reread of this. 
still love it so much, can't wait to talk about it, and then continue on to Tyrant's Throne. Ah! Love it. Um, which means that my main read now is Someone You Should Build a Nest In by John Wiswell. Um, I am now just over 100 pages in. I'm on page 107 of this, so I am here. Ta-da! Um, so I have more of a feel for this now. And although when I started it, I was like, how is this going to be a mix of wholesome and, you know, vibes of cosy fantasy with gruesome, gory horror mixed in as well. And now I'm just over 100 pages in, I kind of get it. I see it. Because it is kind of cute and wholesome and cosy in the way that this monster is falling in love for the first time. She's never experienced love and this monster hunter has just kind of fallen into her life in just the right circumstances and she's falling in love but at the same time she's killing people and eating their bodies and absorbing bones into her shape-shifting mass to perfect her human form like she's using this guy's jaw and like using all sorts of human and animal bones to create a human-like structure within herself and yeah it's just it's just kind of gross and gory but fun like i really like shashashan's vibes <laughs> like yeah she's a murderer yeah she will eat your corpse but she's fun <laughs> um and there's talk of how the building a nest in someone is kind of literal in the sense of putting Shashashan putting her eggs in someone for her eggs to hatch and burrow out of this body and on the first page we kind of get the story of how Shashashan hatched and burrowed out of her father's body eating him and his bones and so yeah it's it's weird weird combination but is bizarrely working and I'm enjoying this so I'm gonna keep going uh hopefully I can finish this one tomorrow I think that's probably gonna be our last one of this vlog um but yeah I will let you know when I finished it what the final vibes are I guess final verdict so far so good I think <laughs> hello hello it is time to report that I have finished Someone You Can Build a Nest In by John Wiswell. This was so weird, but it worked. So, how do I even start with this? This is a mix of cosy and gruesome, whimsical and horrific, lots of murder, gore, body horror, dismemberment, lots of stuff like that, but also there is a a romance and a love story and it's got that kind of cute vibe as well and somehow those two things go together in this and the vibe, although weird, still suits, it fits, it works. So well done, John, for that. Um, this is a sapphic love story. Um, our monster and our monster hunter are both female, but she is a monster and she is a monster hunter. And the monster that is being hunted is Shisheshin, said monster. And I, for a, for a good portion of this, I was very confused about how that was going to work out. And I do think that there were a lot of conveniences in this. There were a few things that just didn't really have a whole lot of logic to it. Like, it felt almost a little bit insta-lovey, the way that the monster just fell in love. And some things were just very convenient for their relationship to 
progress. Not that I didn't enjoy it, I did, but like from a critical point of view, <laughs> um, there were some conveniences and sometimes the logic didn't quite add up. And there were a few things as well in regards to the hunting of the monster that didn't quite align as well. Like in the beginning, they think that they're hunting a worm, not a shapeshifter, but then the woman who is leading this hunting party, which is not the same monster hunter, but this other woman who is leading the hunting party, seems to have so much knowledge about the monster that Shasheshan is. But you thought you were hunting a worm, not a shapeshifter, but now suddenly you know all about the shapeshifter. It just didn't quite line up, but maybe she was withholding information. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and there were other monster hunters. Maybe she just knew more than they did. It, it could be. It could be okay. But yeah, sometimes the logic wasn't quite there. Towards the end, there was like a whole extra part in this at the end. Uh, part eight, problems other than monsters. And it almost feels like it should have ended there. And this bit is almost like an epilogue. <laughs> Which is funny. And if you've read it, you'll know why that's funny. But I'm not going to say why, because that would be a massive spoiler. But it's, like, after the plot. And it felt a little bit redundant, because, like, it isn't doing anything to further the plot. It was just, like, a nice-to-have little bit. So I feel a bit mixed about that, because, like, I liked it. But it wasn't necessary, and it did feel like it was kind of just dragging a little bit. But it was nice in an epilogue-y sort of way. So yeah, I had a good time. The vibes, the vibes were good. Good vibes. I loved the monstrous elements of this. And maybe me as not a romance reader is why the romance felt a little bit illogical in places. I don't know. Um, but overall, this one's getting a three star from me. I haven't put it through core pile. Maybe I should have done that. But my gut instinct is a three. Um, just because some of the characters were, like, very one-dimensional characters, and the logic let it down in places. Atmosphere, I think, was very good. Vibes, very good. I did like the plot and those things combining. Um, so yeah, three stars overall. Three stars is not a bad rating. Um, but yeah, that is that. And that is, I believe, my 14th book up to this point in April. So we're ending the first third of the month, I'm pretty sure, with 14 books. Yeah, so we had A Psalm for the Wild Built, God Killer, um, all the manga I read for the J.D. Ray of Manga vlog, you can go and check that out over there, <laughs> um, Ragnar Crimson 2, Ragnar Crimson 3, Saint's Blood, and Someone You Can Build a Nest In. So a good start to this uh, reading challenge, I think, being 14 books in. And with that, I'm gonna wrap this one up. So thank you ever so much for watching the first third of April. April will come in three parts, I think. <laughs> um, so stay tuned to see how the rest of my reading challenge goes, but so far so good. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed watching. Yeah. Let me know how your April reading's going so far if you're participating in the challenge. Hope you're crushing it. Uh, and I will see you in whatever comes next. Bye!